So then, today is the third Sunday after Easter. We'll be here again in Yucca, in California. And the epistle for this third Sunday after Easter, taken from St. Peter's first epistle, chapter 2. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims to refrain yourselves from carnal desires which war against the soul. Have in your conversation good among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by the good works which they shall behold in you glorify God in the day of visitation. Be ye subject, therefore, to every human creature for God's sake, whether it be to the king as excelling, or to the governor as is sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of the good. For so is the will of God, that by doing well you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not as making liberty a cloak for malice. But as a servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. For this is thankworthy in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then the gospel, taking that according to St. John chapter 16. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, a little while, and now you shall not see me. Again, a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he saith to us? A little while, and you shall not see me. And again, a little while, and you shall see me. And because I go to the Father. They said, Therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while. We know not what he speaketh. And Jesus knew that they had a mind to ask him. And he said to them, <clears throat> Of this do you inquire among yourselves, because I said a little while, and you shall not see me. Again a little while, and you shall see me. Many men I say to you, that you shall be lament and weep, but the world shall rejoice. And you shall be made sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman when she is and in labor hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But when she hath brought forth a child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into this world. So also you now indeed have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man shall take from you. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Then, in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Amen. <clears throat> Today is third Sunday after Easter. You <clears throat> consider St. Leo the Great says, when our Lord says, A little while I'll be with you, a little while I'll not be with you. This little while will simply refers to the entire history of the world from the time that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and that he returns at the end of the world. <clears throat> And he says, a little while I shall not be with you because I go to the Father. And you shall be sorrowful, but the world shall rejoice. This little while from Pentecost, Easter, Ascension Thursday, until the ending of the world. In this little while, the world shall rejoice at the sorrow of the followers of Jesus Christ. At the sorrow of those who have the truth, at the sorrow of the Catholics who have the faith, at the sorrow of those who live the life they're supposed to live, there shall be rejoicing in the world. We're reminded of this when we receive the sacrament of confirmation. When you receive the sacrament of confirmation, the bishop gives a light slap upon the cheek. <clears throat> and when you receive that slap, you are reminded that there shall be persecution. If you are faithful to Jesus Christ at any of the seven ages of the church, there will be persecution. Now the Lord goes away for a little while in order to test us. He will then come back. On the day of judgment, he will come back and he will speak to the seven churches. We begin to read the book of Apocalypse today in the Holy Scripture. We read through the entirety of the sacred scripture. The modern Protestants and modern men call this book the book of Revelation. But it is the book of Apocalypse, which means the same thing, means divine revelation. <clears throat> but the book of Apocalypse we begin to read today. Remind us that the history of the world is the history of the little while. The little while in which 
The Lord Jesus Christ goes to his Father. The same little while in which those who follow him shall be made to experience sorrows. And the same little while in which friendship shall be formed, like the friendship of, of Pilate and Herod, and which rejoicing shall happen at the destruction and assault and pain of those that follow Christ. There shall be a little while, but then the Lord God shall return at each of these seven ages. And when he returns, he shall give us a joy that no man can take from us. Those who have the small rejoicing of this world, it shall end, and they shall go to eternal damnation. Furthermore, notice the rejoicing of the wicked ones. The wicked ones can only rejoice in the sorrow of others. They rejoice in the sorrow of the good, in the sorrow of the just. But then one day God is going to come back. He will come at the end of the world. And now there are seven ages of the church. These seven ages of the church match the seven days of the first week of the world, in which God on the first day said, let there be light. And on the seventh day, he rested from his work. And God controlled each of those seven days. Each of those days, he created what he willed. And on the sixth day, he finished his work. Then on the seventh day, he rested. So likewise, there will be seven ages of the church, Old Testament and New Testament. In the final age, the Lord God shall call together all men to judgment. And there will be seven churches. According to the common teaching of saints and theologians and mystics, we are right now in the year 2021 at the end of the fifth age of those seven ages. We are the church of Sardis. And God speaks to each church and he tells them what are their strengths and what are their evils and what are their weaknesses of these seven churches. And the angel of the Lord, of the church of, of uh, the, 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 to the angel of the church of Sardis, which is the fifth age, write, this is our age, the last 500 years. The church of Sardis begins with the time of Martin Luther and will end with the chastisement and the switching over to the time of the great victory of the church, which is the church of Philadelphia. And to the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things saith he, that hath the seven spirits of God, and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast the name of being alive, and thou art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things that remain, which are ready to die. <clears throat> For I find not thy works full before my God. Have in mind, therefore, in what manner thou hast received and heard, and observe and do penance. If then thou shalt not watch, I will come to thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know at what hour I will come to thee. But thou hast, and, 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 but thou hast a few names in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, because they are worthy." He that shall overcome shall thus be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, and I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. The year our Lord speaks of St. Paul John to the church of Sardis, our church. This is our time. First, you have the name of being alive. The church of Sardis say these things. The seven spirits, I know thy works. Thou hast the name of being alive, and thou art dead. What is the chief hallmark of our age? The very chief hallmark of our age is that we are filled with good people. With people that know that they are good. With people that say good things. The people that say, I, I want to help others, I believe in God, I am ready to help, <clears throat> I am ready to do the right thing, I believe and I am going to do the right thing. We have the name of being alive. We have the name of being intelligent and advanced. We have the name of being charitable. <clears throat> we have the name of have, having provided more for others than any other age. 
There's more food. There's more clothing. <clears throat> there's more material things in our age than in any other age in the history of the world. Thou hast the name of being alive. And the Catholics all say they're good. And they all say that they are good Catholics. Just because they're in a second marriage, they're still good Catholics. Just because they don't go to church on Sunday, they're still good Catholics. And if they do go to church on Sunday, they're good Catholics. And if they are in a first marriage, they're good Catholics. And if they go to the Latin Mass, they're good Catholics. And if they go to the New Mass, they're good Catholics. And if they stay home and pray their rosary, they're good Catholics. And if they do anything, they're good Catholics. We're in the age of good people. Everybody is good and 100% convinced of it. This is the age of the sin of pride. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ said that two people walked, two men walked into the temple to pray. And there was not even the blessed sacrament in that temple. It was just a place that was called holy because the priest prayed there. It was just a building. And in this building in which the priest prayed, which was called holy because the priest was there, the publican came and said, O Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. But the Pharisee said, O Lord, I thank thee that I am not like the rest of men. We are in the age of Pharisees. We're in the age in which every man is not like the rest of men. No one can stand dishonest businessmen, but they're dishonest themselves. No one can stand the impure, especially when you become holy, and yet they're impure themselves. No one can consent to any wicked thing, and yet they are wicked themselves, and they say, we are not wicked. To the church of Sardis, saith this, says St. John, the angel of the seven spirits. When St. John saw this angel, he saw him carrying the, seven, the, the angel of the seven spirits, and he had feet of brass, and he was filled with great strength. And when St. John, the holy apostle, saw this angel, he fell down in terror and he was to die of fear. But the angel reached down and touched him and said, Fear not, I give thee strength. When this angel speaks, he is most serious. And he knows exactly what is the fault of our age. Everybody is holy and everybody is good and everybody is conservative and everybody hates the liberals and everybody is good in every way. It's all just the way it is. Hence, what does God say? What does the Holy Ghost say about our age? To this church of Sardis write these things. Saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works that thou hast the name of being alive, and thou art dead. There is more death in our age than any other age in the history of the world. And no matter how dead we are, dead in works, we consider ourselves good, we consider ourselves generous, we consider ourselves alive. Be watchful and strengthen the things that remain, which are ready to die. The hallmark of our age is that everything is ready to die. So when the fathers speak about this passage, they say, this is the age where Christendom dies. Every good thing that we received, we had Catholic governments, we had Catholic kings, we have Catholic laws in all of our countries in the West. And the government stopped being Catholic, and they died. The Catholic kings stopped being Catholic kings, and they died. The Catholic laws died. The Catholic agreements with the church died. Everything Catholic died. The Catholic customs in our countries died. And then the death came to our church, and the Catholic liturgy of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass died. And the Catholic teaching about the cross died. And the Catholic rosary died. And the Catholic customs died. And the Catholic dress of man. And the Catholic dress especially of woman died. And the Catholic family died. This is the fifth age. It is the age of death. And the age in which those things that still remain are ready to die. Now they don't know what marriage is. They don't know that there is a God. They don't know about anything. 
and all good that remains is ready to die. And therefore he says, in this age, hold on to what you have, for it is ready to die. All things that God gave us in this world to make Christendom is dead. This is the hallmark of our age. The Blessed Virgin Mary said in all of her apparitions, or true apparitions during this age, she said that during this time there will be a decay of the church. There will be a decay of customs. Our Lady of Quito said, there shall be a general decay and loss of all good Catholic customs. There shall be an assault of all the seven sacraments. There shall be a loss of faith. Our Lady of La Salette said in our age that there Rome will become the seat of the Antichrist. Rome will lose the faith. There shall be the abomination of desolation set up in the holy place, just as it was in the time of Daniel the prophet. This is the age of decay and the age of death. <clears throat> That's the story of the last 500 years, and especially the story of the last final death of this age, which happened at Vatican II in the 1960s. The rebellion of the 1960s in California and the rebellion of the 1960s throughout the world, this was only a, a mirror or an image or a reflection of the decay that happened in our holy church. It's what God said would happen in the fifth age of the church that we experience now. And then what does God say to those of this age? There are so many people now that remember the 1950s. They're now in their 70s and 80s. And how wonderful the 1950s were. Everybody went to church. Girls wore dresses. They all had nice uniforms in the schools. Everybody was Catholic. There were conversions to the faith through the 1940s and 1950s. In the United States, more than 1 million people converted to the Catholic faith every year in the 1950s just in our country alone. There were conversions throughout the world. It was so wonderful. But what does the Holy Ghost say about this wonderful growth? Be watchful and strengthen the things that remain which are ready to die. For I find not thy works full before my God. I know thy works, that thou hast any being alive, but thou art dead. It is the age in which there are no works. The external things are there. For a time, but there are no works. There are not the works of charity inside the families. There are not the works of grace. What does the wonderful parent of the generation of World War II, what is that generation called the greatest generation? And what about the generation that came after them, the baby boomers? What did they want for their children? They wanted them to be successful. They wanted them to make well in this world. They wanted them to be good citizens. They did not want them to go to heaven. And these are, are corrupt and dead. They are dead on the inside. And all things they held, behold the wealth of the 1950s. Behold the wealth of America. It is ready to die. Behold your beautiful clothing that you wear in the 1950s. Behold, it's ready to die. Behold all the masses you say you're going to full churches. Behold, they're ready to die. Behold, your families are ready to fall apart and they are ready to die. Why? Because thou hast not done good works. For he who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. How many times did Christ say that? He who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall not enter the kingdom of heaven, but rather he who doth the will of my Father. These are the evil ones of this age. He speaks first of how horrible, how vile, and how evil this age is, and yet this age shall say, we are the best. We are the most developed. We are the most advanced. We are evolved. This is the lie of this wicked age. The age of Pharisees, the age of, the, of men that say, we are not like the rest of men. And they are not as, they are worse than the rest of men, filled with a great pride. But then what does God say to the people of this age? Have in mind, therefore, in what manner thou hast received and heard, observe and do penance. 
Have in mind what thou hast received and heard. St. Paul says, If we ourselves, or an angel from heaven, teach you another gospel that you have already received and heard, let him be anathema. During this age, take in mind what you have received and heard. Whatever we see from our church, the teaching of 2,000 years that cannot change. What have we heard? We have heard what we are required to believe and what we are required to do in order to be good Catholics. We must believe the truth of the gospel. We must believe the truth of faith. And we must practice charity. And this obligation is a grave obligation and not a light one. In our age, charity does not exist. And Christ also said during this age, it shall be a gauge of great sin, the age of the greatest of sin, because charity shall grow cold. This is the age of the coldness of charity, the age of the growth of great pride, and not only in Biden, and not only in Hillary, and not only in the liberals, but in those that call themselves Catholics and those that even truly hold the truth in their minds. They are, have the name of being alive, but they are dead. But then the Holy Ghost proceeds through the mouth of St. John and the angels speaking to St. John. If then thou shalt not watch, I will come to thee as a thief and thou shalt not know at what hour I will come to thee. Another hallmark of our age. Even souls that are near death do not think about the time of the coming of God. They don't think of the time of judgment. I shall come as a thief when the time that thou knowest not. This is what I'm going to do in this age. You think you have another day to live? You shall die. You think you have another day of safety? You shall be taken when you shall not be known. I shall come to the souls of this age as a thief in the night at a time that you do not expect. We don't expect the trials and tribulations that come to us. We know that one day our economy is going to completely collapse. It shall come at the day when we don't expect and we don't know. We know that one day we're going to turn into a complete immoral mess and it's going to be total pandemonium and chaos and violence in our streets. But we don't know the day or the hour. It shall come when we least expect it. He shall come as a thief in the night in our age. And this has happened down the entirety of the last 500 years. It shall come to an, age, an end with the Church of Philadelphia, the Sixth Age. But now the conclusion of the Fifth Age. But thou hast a few names in Sardis, the age of the remnant. Thou hast a few names in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, because they are worthy. There shall be a few names who have not defiled their garments. He notices in this age... There will be many people who claim they have the truth, who claim they're against the liberals, but they shall not have white garments. They shall be filthy. But there shall be a few names in Sardis during this wicked time in which we live, clothed in white garments, and I will not, uh, uh, a few names in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white because they are worthy. He that shall overcome shall thus be clothed in white garments. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. And I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the spirit of Seth to the churches. So there will be necessary in our age to hold that true faith with white garments. Hence, as in the early days of the church, the father is emphasized. Believe the gospel, believe the gospel, believe the gospel, and take care of the poor. Give alms, generosity and poverty. Make sure you are being generous to the poor and generous to the church. Make sure you are generous especially to those who cannot benefit you in any way. Be generous even to your enemies when they are in the state of necessity. Now this is required at all ages. However, in our age, it is a special requirement because of our sin of pride and because of the fact that we believe we are good even without good works. We are in an age in which good works are less than they have ever been in the history of the world. And yet, there are organizations to take care of the poor. There are all kinds of groups and organizations that do these things, but we don't do it. 
and that there must be a, a, a wearing of white garments. There must be a taking of the faith of those who do not have it. There must be a comforting of those that need to be comforted. There must be comfort those that are mourned. Visit the imprisoned, the seven corporal and the seven spiritual works of mercy. These are missing amongst Catholics in our times. There must be a wearing of white garments. And then there must not only be the saying of that which is true. And then shall come the transition to the sixth age, which is the age of glory. The age of a brief age of glory before the coming of Jesus Christ, before the collapse of the seventh age and the coming of the Antichrist and the coming of Christ at the second coming. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, the sixth age, which we are about to enter into, write, These things saith the Holy One, the True One, He that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have given before thee a door opened, which no man can shut, because thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Use our little strength. Keep the word and do not deny his name. Behold, I will bring of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews, and they are not, and they lie. There will be those that say they are Catholics, those that say they are followers of Christ, and they are of the synagogue of Satan. These are the souls of the end of the sixth age, who say they are true, but they are not. They shall pass over into the seventh age, or the fifth age, rather. They shall pass over into the sixth age, and they shall be the synagogue of Satan. Many of these synagogues of Satan, they are now called the conservatives in the Catholic Church. They are now called the conservatives in government. Pay attention to that. For when the Antichrist comes, he shall have the appearance of the conservatives. He shall have the appearance of the traditional ones who have beautiful traditional words, but not traditional practice. They are the synagogue of Satan. And this synagogue of Satan is around us right now, in this transition period between the fifth and sixth age. To the age of Philadelphia, the church of Philadelphia, the sixth age, write, These things hath the Holy One and the True One. He that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no, and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have given before thee a door opened, which no man can shut. Because thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will bring of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and adore before thy feet, and they shall know that I have loved thee. This is the age of the conversion. There will be a conversion to Jews at the, end of the, at the end of the sixth age, but also of Catholics who have turned against God. They are going, the synagogue of Satan is going to be made to bow down before the true followers of Christ. There shall be a victory coming. But in our age, beware of the sin of the Pharisees, the sin of our age, and be, be saying that we have good works, but the good works are not in us. So let us not fall into the great troubles of our age, the great evil of our age. In any case, we prepare now between the sixth, fifth, and sixth age. Persevere in the faith. And it's asked the grace to be able to not only hold the faith exteriorly, but make sure we wear it with white garments of put into practice and holding on to all the things we have as Catholics, which are all ready to die. But they can be held in our own lives, in our own families, and, and God will preserve us unto the sixth age. Because I bless you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.